Hey y'all, it's Wendy at Hardneck Farms, and I would like to talk to you guys about regenerative farming. Now, you can find in your town a local business. Some of them are that uh, not necessarily your big chain stores, but we're talking like your local grocery stores, small town stores that aren't chains that would give you boxes. So here is your option. You take a box. This can break down into some really good soil. Now, when you get the box, see this is a piece that is the perfect size. You could either put it into a compost. You can, if you don't have Bermuda grass and weeds like we do out here in the country, you can lay this down in layers and then cover it with a tarp and it'll break down into soil. Now that does take a lot of time. Um, you can put this into a compost tote. You can get you some red wigglers and you can put a little bit of soil and the red wigglers will break it down. You'll use the worm castings for your soil. Um, I utilize cardboard. I have a local business that gives me cardboard now, the thing that you have to do with this cardboard, you have to peel the stickers and you have to peel the tape. That is the drawback, but it doesn't take that much time. I have a box cutter and then I have a great big box and I break down into small squares and you don't have to do that, but that's how I do. When I'm building the raised beds, I place this down in the very bottom. We had an ice storm, so we had lots of trees come down. We had lots of wood. So we had a lot of wood that we put down in the bottom on top of the cardboard. And then you can put some organic material. You can do some leaves if you do not have your yard sprayed or spray your farm. Regenerative farming is, is a natural process where you don't spray, you don't use chemicals, you don't use fertilizers. If you build your soil structure, you won't need fertilizers. You won't need any of that. I have never used fertilizers, ever. I've been farming on this farm as of this month, 14 years. And not once have I used fertilizers. So that is what I do. I also um, put little twigs in between. I do a little bit of coffee grounds. It's real acidic. So you want to save the coffee grounds or such for blueberries, strawberries, things that need high acidity. Then I put some soil down. You can use the regular red dirt. We've got a pile of it out there. You want to just sift through it and make sure you get as much of the weeds or anything down. It's best to um, lay a black tarp down, put your soil on it, and cover it up with another black tarp. And that way you solarize that soil and basically sterilize it naturally with no chemicals and then you put it into this process and it builds into really rich soil i have soil that i've done some videos on on the channel in the past and I, i've showed you guys the good soil that i've made out of that oklahoma red dirt and I've turned it into a very rich, loamy, high quality soil with no chemicals. This is important that you know how to do this. These are resources that are free. And you can tell people you're saving this stuff or you need this stuff. Talk to your friends and family. They, a lot of people will be happy to give this stuff to you. This is how I make my soil. Um, I just started about 
four years ago doing vermicompost, vermicomposting, I can't talk, and that's where you feed the red wigglers and you got to keep them in a tote. It is a process and it is kind of gross, but you put some food scraps in there, some paper, some cardboard, not a lot. You don't want to overwhelm your red wigglers, but you put a little bit in there, let them break it down. You keep doing this and then you strain your red wigglers out and use that worm castings and that is the richest soil. Those things will work fast. They break down that stuff within a few months. That is an asset right there. That is part of regenerative farming. That's where you are building the, your soil structure and your microorganisms and your microbes and all your natural stuff that um, lives in soil. You want living soil goes into the beds. And the reason I'm saying to do this is because part of the process of me getting older and then restoring the farm, I started building some raised beds because I fight the Bermuda grass. And Bermuda grass has rhizomes and it chokes everything out really quick. It's really hard to grow a garden in Bermuda grass. So I killed two birds with one stone and I started building raised beds. And I went ahead and ordered a couple truckloads the last couple years, not, yeah, last year and the year before. Filled them raised beds, put my seeds in and boom. It was crap. It had freaking grays on in it because people don't realize, and I know this is gonna be a lengthy video, and I may just go ahead and stop it and then have this just be part one of some of the soil. And then my part two video, I'm gonna talk about some more stuff in detail. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it now so I don't overwhelm you, and then we'll do another video. So this is part one of building your own soil with natural resources where you will have rich, all natural soil where you can grow the tastiest food and I guarantee it. So this is Wendy at Hardneck Farms. This is part one.